All right, so some of you people that will see this video probably know me, and some of you that will see this video probably don't know me. And the first thing I want to ask is, do you know that hell is real? And a lot of people say that, you know, heaven and hell, um, they think, you know, heaven is real and everything, but nobody really talks about hell and um, if they think that it's real. And so basically over the past couple of weeks, I've been trying to get closer to God and studying my Bible and um, research, researching, you know, this subject because I asked a question like, you know, am I really saved and do I know for sure that if I die, will I go to heaven? You know, everybody wants to go to heaven, right? So I'm asking you, do you know that hell is real? If you call yourself a Christian or if you're a pastor or a preacher of the gospel, um, are you preaching about hell? And do you know that hell is a real place? And that it's so easy to go to hell and be cut off from God and just be tortured and for eternity. So last night, right, I had came across a scripture in Ezekiel that I want to read to you right now. And it says, Ezekiel 3, chapters 18 and 19. When I say unto wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at thine hand. See, and let's look at that. That's just chapter 18. I'm about to get to 19. What that basically is saying is, if you know someone that's living in sin, or, you know, not even just living in sin, like someone who is saved, and you don't warn them about hell, or you don't warn them about their sin, and they die, without you warning them and you know the truth, then basically their blood is on your hands. And when it's time for judgment, God is going to put their blood on your hand. Now, chapter 19. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Meaning that if you warn someone or someone that is saved about hell and, you know, committing sin leads you straight to hell and you have to repent and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in order for you to be saved. And they don't listen to you and they keep doing their wickedness or, you know, or preaching about, you know, gospel or without preaching about hell, then if they die, you won't be responsible because you took the time out to warn them. And basically, us as Christians, that's our purpose. And I've been praying and praying and praying for God to tell me, you know, what my purpose is and what he wants me to do as a Christian. And most Christians, the purpose is the same to save people, to win souls, to let them know that hell is real. And if you don't repent while you're living on this earth, you could die and be sent to hell, tortured for eternity. Now, not just only that, this morning when I woke up today, when this is Sunday, the 27th, I believe. Yes, 
August 27th, Sunday. And um, I had was, you know, I was looking across some videos on YouTube, and I had um, seen the caption um, um, about a very scary dream. It was a girl, and um, I clicked on the video. Mind you, I had just read this in Ezekiel the night before, and um, so I'm looking at the video, and she was basically saying that she had the craziest dream, and that she dreamed about this boy that she know that had passed. And um, basically, in the dream, he had came back from the dead, and he was explaining to the people, you know, and her and a group of other people about how he died. And um, in the midst of him explaining that she was snatched and taken um, far down the street and was confronted by a group of people that looked like they was gothic. They had on all black, like the, the hoop things in their ears. And um, they was asking for this guy that she knew who had just came back from the dead. And so she was like, yeah, I know him. I'll take it to him and whatever. So she got back to the place where the guy was explaining, you know, how he died and everything. And... Um, when her friend saw who she was with, he started panicking. He was scared. Like he was, he was um, saying, "No, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. I'm not going nowhere with you." And the guy was like, "Yes, you are." And he's like, "No, I'll never go back with you and everything like that." So the guy came, comes behind him and grabs him from behind, and he's like, "Please, y'all, please, please help me." And um, I don't want to go back, and I don't want to go back. So her and her friends try to grab him and um, pull him and stuff like that. And in the midst of the tugging and pulling, she had realized that the guy who was coming after him was a demon, and he had came back from hell. And he was scared, so so she she believed that she could try to save him. So she asked him to, you know, say this prayer with her. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And as he tried to open his mouth. And say the prayer. All he could do was gasp. And she tried to get him to pray it again. And um, then that's when the demon had entered inside of his body. And snatched him back to hell. And this guy that was in this dream. Was a real person that she knew. And the, and the dream scared her to death. So. And God saved her soul. He allowed me to see her video. And it just ministered to my spirit because the night before I had read in Ezekiel that if I know the gospel and I know that you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and really believe that he is God to be saved and not taken to hell when I die I have to spread that gospel I have to tell you guys the same way I know that hell is real hell is real so right now, if you're not saved, if you don't know God, I'm telling you, repent right now before it is too late, before you die and you know the truth. Wouldn't you, ra wouldn't you rather accept God as your Lord and Savior right now and turn away from sin than to die not knowing, not knowing, than to take that chance to die? And be sent to hell and tortured. Tortured. Like every day tortured. Like you can look this up yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. It's so many different people that have, have either died and gone to hell. And lived to tell the tale because God saved them. Or have had a dream. Or actually was taken up. Taken down by God himself to hell. To be a. A testimony to so many different people, and it's just—it's not just not just black or white people. You know, people that know English that have testimonies of hell and everything. It's people in other languages. So these people who don't even know our language, all these other all these other people that had the same experiences, and then you could compare the videos. All of them pretty much had the same type of experience, and they wake up. With a burning fire to let people know that God is real and heaven and heaven is real and hell is real. If you die right now without repenting your sins and accepting God as your Lord and Savior, then you will go to hell. You will. 
And it's a lot of people that you probably know right now that died without accepting Lord, the Lord as their God and Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And they are in hell right now. And they are begging and praying that you don't come down there and join them. This stuff really got into my spirit. And and I don't even make videos. You know, I don't I don't like to get on videos and post videos and, and, uh, and on social media and anything like that. But I know that I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to be tortured. I've seen so many testimonies about, you know, people that... Uh, that uh, steal and they go to hell and and have their limbs, you know, their fingers and everything chopped off and over and over and over again. How people who had abortions they go to hell and have their bodies and bones broken over and over and over again. Like different things, like different different things happen to you in hell from your sins on this earth. And even if you are a good person and you live your life being good or you give to charity or you go to church every Sunday, none of that will save you from going to hell if you do not tell people about God. If you do not win souls for Christ, that's our duty as Christians. It, it, the Bible says it's better to not know me or not know the truth than to know and be punished because you did not share it with anybody. You have to share the gospel and not only this scripture. I've came across two other scriptures about, about sharing the gospel right now. You know, some people are going to believe and some people are not going to believe. It's just as simple as that. But I know that my soul is free because I took the time out to warn people and let people know about God. It says here in Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come. This was Jesus was saying to the disciples about the closing age. So this will be the one last chance for non-believers to hear and believe and repent. And there is another scripture in Revelations. And it says, Then I saw another angel flying. And in the midst of... I, then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven. Having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on earth. To every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him who made heaven and earth and sea and springs of water. It says, This is the end time in Revelations. And this is another important step in the closing age. The angel will be proclaiming the gospel just as God instructed his believers to share with every nation, tribe, language, and um, the people in the world. So, if you, if you read in your Bible about Revelations and you see, you know, all the things that um, are happening now, it's the same that happened in Revelations. Like... It's, it's, it's no question. Like, some people don't want to believe it because they know that they'll have to stop doing all of the stuff that they like doing, like, you know, drinking and, and smoking and getting high and, and running to the club, like, and dancing to, you know, listening to the music that they listen to. And, you know, I know that you like all of that, but is it, is it worth it? Like, is it worth your soul being tortured for all eternity? Is it worth it? Because it's definitely not worth it for me. I'd rather live a born life than to just have a little fun on this earth for a little while to be tortured for all eternity. Like, that is not, it's like, you know, it's no, no comparison. Like, that just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense. And I was living that life for a long time. I was living that life for a long time. 
before I knew the truth. I went to church, yeah, I got baptized when I was 12 years, 12 years old. But nobody in the church was really preaching the full gospel. Nobody was talking about hell and 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 church. So you would you you be thinking like you know well it, it ain't no cons you know it ain't no consequences for me not you know believing in God like you know I can do what I want or I can choose to believe this. So in reality, you know a lot of these preachers and pastors they're pe they're preaching partiality. They're not telling you the whole truth. They're not giving you the whole truth you need to know. For you to make your decision. So, if you die in your iniquity and then you're sinning, you go to hell, then they are partly to blame. Like, they are partly to blame because they didn't give you the whole truth. And right now, I want to give you the whole truth. It's either you believe in God and you believe it with your whole heart and you worship and love Him, or you go to hell. It's just as simple as that. It's just as simple as that. You have to believe in God. You have to spread his gospel. You have to do whatever he wants you to do on this earth. And it's not its not a burden or, or it's not anything bad or wrong with it. Because I feel like now that I'm sober and I'm clean and I'm believing in God, a lot of, you know, I'm more happier than I've ever been in my life. Like, I have um, better relationships with people. You know, I deal with stuff better. I'm not angry all the time. You know, I'm not bitter. I'm able to forgive myself and other people for things that that went wrong in my life. Like I'm, I'm so much better. I've, I've, I'm happier. Like I feel like I can be happy and enjoy things in life without getting high all the time and being and being under the influence. Like I'm so much better. I'm so much better, and I and I am delighted right now to make this video. Like a lot of people that know me will be skeptical. You know. They probably gonna say, you know, say whatever they gonna say. I really don't care. Yes, I'd lived a life of sin for a long time, but now I'm choosing life and not death. I'm choosing to go to he heaven. I'm choosing to go to heaven and not spend eternity in hell. I'm choosing to dress appropriate appropriately. I'm choosing not to show my skin. I'm choosing not to get get high. I'm choosing not to run the streets. I'm choosing not to go clubbing. I'm choosing life. I'm choosing God. The Bible says, narrow is the way to salvation and wide is the path of destruction. There's so many ways to go to hell. There's so many ways. There's so many ways. And God does not look at one sin as being bigger than the other. It's not you commit one sin and, you know, it's not that bad, you know, because you ain't murder nobody or anything like that. Like, the little smallest thing can take us to hell. And right now, I'm not perfect. I'm just learning. I'm just learning. Like I said, I just watched this video this morning, and I decided to get on here and to save my soul and to save somebody else's soul that's watching this video. Repent. Just ask God for, for forgiveness right now for everything that you've done that is unpleasing to his sight. Knowingly and unknowingly. Name some of the things that you know that is a sin that you've been doing and ask him for his forgiveness. And say, I accept Jesus, like, Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior right now. And I believe that he died for my sins. And then begin to go and tell other people. I know it might be scary. It's scary right now for me doing this video. But I know I got to do it to be saved. So I just wanted to just let you guys know that hell is real. It is real. I've seen so many different testimony. And I challenge you to go on social media, YouTube. And just look up hell, you know, testimonies to hell and everything like that. You don't have to believe, you know, the things that I'm saying. Because there's people that actually experience it that can tell you. Because I have an experience going to hell or having a dream about hell. I just choose to believe that God is ministering to me. He's trying to save me. And in return, I'm trying to save you.